Um, right, so anyway, welcome to the pod, Dave Smith, uh, Mindset Soldier. How's it going, mate? I'm doing amazing, bro. Yourself? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, good gym session early, by the way. It's yeah, it all right. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit of mix up on it. It's nice. So, um, like, I want to talk about fucking loads of stuff to be honest with you. Yeah. But for, for starters, I want to talk about your military career. Yeah. And um, like, where did it start? What like when did you go in? What what age did you go in? So I joined. The military. And what regiment? Uh, joined the military at 19 years old on the 25th of January 2009 it was um, joined the Grenadier Guards um, went through basic training um, out of like 100 recruits came um, best soldier I got the award for that nice which is fucking massive for me from the year before being fucking homeless and living on the streets to go in you was homeless yeah, living on the streets that, to join the military did that went straight to Afghan within about two minutes so I went as a buzz at me fucking hell a buzz I can't get my words out this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you was gassing, that's why, yeah, in the gym well, session. Mate, the gym session going. Um, as a casualty replacement um, in Afghan, so that was my first tour, literally going within a year, my life literally just changed completely. And the military gave me a massive, massive uplift and discipline. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So that's where you met Charlie then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's mates with Charlie Leonard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Max, that's... Um, yeah, you went to Thailand recently, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Fucking chilling. <laughs> we, 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 won't talk about, we won't talk about what you told me earlier. <laughs> that wasn't me. I didn't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking, yeah, anyway, so, how did, did you, did you go to, um, you went to Afghan, Iraq, or which one did no, you go so to? I did two tours of Afghan, yeah. one in 2009 slash 10, that's a winter tour, and then 2012, we did our summer tour. Which yeah. is one of the most connect ones we went on. To yeah. Be fair, like, yeah, yeah. What What was your job role? What was your? So joined the military. Um, when I passed out, became a guardsman. Yeah. Um, did my corporal course after my second tour and physical training instructor. Then went on to my second tour as a like a section commander or two IC. Yeah. 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 Cool. So when you was when you was out there. It's one of them. It's one of them questions that everyone fucking asks, isn't it? And it's did like, did you kill anyone? Did you? Ki- <laughs> that, that, I don't. I don't like that question. Nah. I, I was in the. I was in the poachers. Yeah. Um. I left in 2013. I went in the same around like 2009, mm-hmm. 2009, 2010. I can't remember. But I didn't have a great thing. I didn't go. On, I didn't go on tour. I didn't do out crazy. Mm-hmm. I went to Kenya. Yeah. Like I did. Ops ready for tour, but when I left, that they didn't. They, then they went like a year after. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Didn't not know really crazy going on when I left. But um, so you get a lot of people talking shit about what they've done in the forces, aren't you? You know, you get a lot of people lying about the mates dying, people like them killing people, yeah, or the mayors, yeah, 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 fucking it's gross, isn't it? But like, if you did you go? In, I, I've seen something about you. Uh, one of your videos, I saw something about you going through a certain thing where you see one of your mates die or something like that. Is that true? Yeah, there's. We lost five of our close friends on that tour. Yeah, do you know what I mean they're not brothers, um, but we've seen a lot of action on that tour just because it, it. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Yeah. On that tour, it was weird because it was the most beautiful place I've probably been to. Really. It insane. Like you, when you're up on the hills and you can see across the green zone, it's just. Solitude, bro. Mm. Calm, relaxed. Mm. But as soon as you step over like a meter of a line, you're getting shot at, blown up. It's fucking mad, bro. Yeah. Um, but that I, I'll always remember it, bro. That's I think that's when I kind of changed from a, a boy to a man and being being able to hold my emotions in chaos. And from my background, I think I've always kind of been a soldier because all of what I've been through, I've took on so much trauma and struggles. Mm. And that's why a lot of people that go to the military come from that background. Because they're all just broken men and women that go to the military. Not nine point nine percent of the people. The people are officers that don't deserve the job anyway because they're shit at it, mm. in a way. Um, but I thrived off it, bro. Absolutely fucking thrived off it. Um, there was numerous things that happened on that tour. I think one of the ones that you were on about, uh, he actually survived. It's my mate John Dawson. I was in training with. He's one of yeah. my good mates. He's still alive today. He got shot in the face. By that was sniper. it. Yeah, yeah, he got yeah. shot in the face. I just assumed he died. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my fucking down there. But like, I assumed he died. If, if, if you don't mind, mate, seeing as we're on, the, seeing as we're on this conversation, like yeah. um, I pulled up a newspaper clipping. Well, obviously, we'll put it on there as well. Yeah. Um, and it's like um, I'm just going to quote straight off, straight off the newspaper. It's uh, bravest of the brave. Uh, Hero City soldier is mentioned uh, um, is mentioned in dispatches after his. Risk of Taliban machine guns and snipers to rescue comrade who was shot in the head. Mm. Is that 
Is that the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that, that, mate, that just fucking... It's different, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's like, that, that is what people don't go through. Yeah, you know, hey, it's movie shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's, it's mad. I can remember that day like it was yesterday because we, whatever emotions we hold onto memories become can become traumas and what we hold onto. Um, if you let it. Yeah, 100%. And it's how you see that. Do you know what I mean? At the time, even when the BBC came around to do that article, bro, I was switched off, bro. I was like, I'm not doing that. I was still going for, I didn't know I had PTSD at the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I don't no recollection of it. I don't want fucking anything. But at the time, bro, do you want me to talk about what happened on the day? Absolutely, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So what we were doing at the time, we were going out doing baiting ops. And what that is, is literally like fishing. You go out, we bait the Taliban so we can get shot at, so we can shoot back into Card Alpha and stuff like that. So we have the, um, well, we can shoot to kill or stuff like that. And we went to a compound, um, taken over the compounds, and we got machine fire from one of the mosques. And we didn't get clearance to go and clear this mosque. And it was the one building that we did not check and we weren't allowed to check. And I said, we have to go in there. We have to. And we just, I said that to the officer. He was like, no, we can't go in there. I said, look, I'll convert to Islam when I was um, 16. I, I can speak Arabic. I can speak to the elders and say, look, we need to go in here and check the building. They would not allow us in there at all. That didn't fucking sit right for me. So we took over a compound, um, we started to get engaged by the enemy, me, John Dawson and Engon went out to the corner of the apex of the building trying to find our arcs. Um, <laughs> John is a fucking idiot sometimes, I love him, like, I'd never let anyone bully him but I'd bully him like the, yeah, in the yeah, army, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean, like, yeah. get a fucking grip of yourself bro. Yeah, yeah. He went out there, he got a hard cock and a jam in his um, SA-80. He started to change like weapon systems and try and take the weapon apart oh, while fuck. getting shot at. I'm no. like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> so get in he the compound. He just needed to clear the chamber. Yeah, he just Mate. Uh, own, own fucking world, bro, cleaning it. And I remember it. I took his rifle off him, bro, and I cocked it. And I remember catching the round that come out the, uh, out the mechanism housing. I caught the round and I put it in my top left at the time. And that wasn't significant at the time, but it was... Um, just because I hold it on to that, I ha had that bullet for the rest of the tour. Yeah. And that's what I kind of had in my mind, it kept me alive for the rest of the tour. But carrying on from that, got his weapons and put back together, we went back in the compound, and then we started to clear the area. And the mosque we weren't allowed in, okay, we sound. So we took over a compound, and then me and the sharpshooter went on top of the compound, which we took over, um, and we just started um, kind of walking around clockwise, stuff like that, so we were a hard target, moving target constantly for about an hour, an hour and a half. Around about 35, 40 degrees. Then I shut it down to Sergeant Shepherd to change over the sentries. And it was Ali Engon and it was John Dawson. John Dawson took over my position and the sharpshooter came down and Angim took over. Uh, if I'm here now, so it would be the mosque was directly in front of me at the corner. I was giving John coordinates, right, look out for this building, movement over there and stuff. I said, do not fucking sit down. If you do sit down, there was divots in top of the building. I said, if you sit down, just lie down, just take a drink and whatever. He said, yeah, 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 sound. I literally got off the building, took my body armor, helmet off, put my rifle down, just about to take my fucking boots off, and all you heard was, that was it. Mm. I was like, I know that sound, bro. Yeah. Then That's a scary sound, yeah, isn't it? When they're coming back from underneath, looking up, shouted Engon, he was in shell shock, bro, which is obviously like PTSD, like he was just gone, bro, like I couldn't get a word out of him. I said, where the fuck's Dawson, where's Dawson? And he just pointed. So I literally ran round the, Left hand side of the compound, on top there was like um, ladders that went up on a heap of shit. There was like a heap of shit from fucking cows, bro. We led there, got on top of the compound, seen Dawson. I had no body armor helmet, but at that point, it's either dead or alive. You're so not thinking about nah, that? Yeah. not at all, bro. Like, so literally just got on top of the compound, literally had nothing on, bro. Just my boots, my trousers. Went over to him. I couldn't see where the entry and exit window was. He was just flat on the floor. I was like, he's fucking dead. Like, gone. Um, picked up the GPMG, picked that up, fucking cocked it, hard cock, jammed, tried to shoot, hard cock, jammed, fucked it off the building. I was like, I'm going to end up fucking dying. Got yeah. down, um, grabbed the SA80 from Dawson, so I grabbed his weapon system, cocked that, that was fucking jammed. I was fucking like, mate. Wow. I was like, I'm gone, bro. Like, these rounds are coming in. I tried to give uh, the position to the um, soldiers below us, so, like, start fucking firing, give me some fucking like, um, cover here. Mm. They started firing and got on top of Dawson. I started to check where the bleeding was come from, checked everything. I checked his fucking cock, balls, arse, legs, anywhere I can to see if there was any exit. Because, like, you know, if you get shot, sometimes if you can't find the entry and exit room, you're going to be bleeding from the or orifice, like yeah. your ears, nose and mouth and stuff. 
pimped him up a little bit, tilted his head, and I could just see where the round hit him. So I tilted it, and the blood came out, and he got shot. So obviously he was sat there, and he's turned and probably looked at Engel, and the sniper shot him straight through the bottom of his chin there. And he came out the top of his head. Fuck it. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> it's a running joke, mate, because I always say to him, mate, if that was me, he had a fat head, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if, that, if that was me, I'd have been killed straight away. Because you've got a fat head, bro. That's yeah, crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking whatever. Wow. So I started to give him first aid. I had to switch my concentration on Dawson because I had no weapon systems. It was either yeah. he gets killed or we both get killed. Mm. So I got on top of him, covered him while the rounds were coming down. I remember just like there was a solo panel on top of the thing and that just, it was literally inches away from us. And when I got him down and I had a look, the, like, the, the rounds were just like, it's weird. Like someone must be looking over that day because mm. it was just like, there was peppered around us and it was like, how the fuck does that happen? Do you know what I mean? Something higher than us has had to protect us that day. So I got him off the top of the building, gave him first aid, drained his um, mouth of blood because he was choking. Got him down and this is where Charlie took over. So I, I grabbed Dawson and it was uh, my mate Hollis, I think Charlie. As I've tried to get him down on the ladders, literally he's tilted and just all the blood from like his throat and his fucking mouth all dripped over fucking Charlie. Oh. Charlie was like, like <laughs> <and he> was, <laughs> I was like, get a grip of it, you fucking crow. Like, <laughs> got him off the building. We got, we got down off the top of the building. I literally ran over, grabbed the 66, which is rocket launcher. Literally just pinned that fucking moss, bro. Bam, straight in the corner and it stopped the firefight at the time. Um, then all of our kind of uh, attention went to Dawson. We called in the heli, came over. They, the Merc was there within about 10, 15 minutes, bro. Um, what they did that day was fucking amazing. You can't, I, could, I could hear it, the heli, but it's like, where the fuck is it, bro? Next minute, it's a handbrake turn in the middle of the air, bro. Bam, straight down. Really? Yeah, mate. Like Their manoeuvres, bro, just, they saved his life that day. Yeah, yeah. I got on top of the building, but if they didn't react, to, that's why they're so amazing. Yeah. And Dawson, I thought he was dead. Um, went over to him and he started to come round um, started to speak to us and um, just had a general conversation he thought like he didn't know what happened he was weren't really conscious did he know he was shot no nah, nah, no nah. he didn't know he was shot he was like what's happened and I said mate you just fell off the top of the building bro like he turned his head and he's like his, head, his eye was hanging out and um, he, he's turned around trying to feel I'm trying to get his hand away because he's had his um, gloves on and that and he put his finger straight in like his forehead bro I was like he did yeah well he's like playing he's like, with it yeah because he's like oh it feels in his finger just went in bro I was like fucking hell like, <laughs> that makes me oh. feel like fuck I was like let me lick it <laughs> <laughs> but I was like bro like, did ya just, nah I did not <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah, good yeah. Is it but you can see there, you see yeah. like obviously sure. yeah. his head there. Like he's obviously got one eye, one eye missing and stuff like that now. Yeah, it is, yeah. Fucking hell. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, just coming back from that just was just mad. It's just, you can't, you can't decompress yeah. when you come in. Like when you go to the, the PBs or CPs and that stuff, they give you a bit of trim, which is terrible which I think they need to be abolished from the army because trim is given to you by your peers, like your platoon sergeant who you're great, great friends with, you have dinner with and stuff like that. You're not going to tell him, yeah, I struggle with that a little bit or stuff like that. So, Can you explain but, what trim is? So trim is when you come off um, kind of an operation and you've seen conflict or people blown up and stuff like that, what you're doing then is your platoon sergeant or someone higher than you that has been given... Um, education in trim which is to do with like uh, mental health PTSD to see if there's any triggering points and stuff like that if, if you've actually dealt with what's happened because a lot of people or soldiers do they come in they don't deal with it and that's right. when they come back and that's when the PTSD starts so it, it does help but it shouldn't be given from someone with your peer group it should be to do with your medical regiment comes in so you don't have any prejudgment or opinions and I think that mm. can help the process a little bit but a man needs to be a man and I agree with it, but in them circumstances, I love the the meaning. Like you need to man up. A lot of people will try and take it away from the world, but a man yeah. without being especially a man with the society bit. now, man, one hundred percent. Yeah, and it needs it. It holds a lot of personal revelations to me and disciplines. Like when someone says you need to fucking man up, it's not about if you're going through a, a psychological or a mental breakdown. It's not the right time to say it. But when you're going through fucking war, you need to man the fuck up, especially mm. in your head. So people that are trying to take that out of the system or society, they're pretty much bitches. Mm. Because men need men. If you're not a man, you're a bitch. 
and this is the mentality you need to have in war you need to bring back in the modern day man I personally think mm. yeah. and fe- fem- feminism's taken over that yeah do you know what I mean mm. like that's kind of where it's fucking going in it I'm not going to get into deep into that one but it, like um what made you start obviously you went through PTSD yeah right so in fact fuck that off how did, how did you become homeless well before the military yeah can I, can I just rewind that question quick yeah yeah I'm going to want to get back onto that so um, you grew up in children's services you grew up in care yeah yeah so um, so for me I worked in children's services for a long time mm. I did it for nine years but I, I was the black sheep in that job because I was, um, I was, I was, just, I've boxed on my life, I've competed on my life, mm. and I brought a different side to care in a sense because I was the, uh, I was the cool, I was the cool guy. Do you know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It, it, weirdly, how dare you laugh at him? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 weirdly enough, because all these people are. That like, was the cool guy. Yeah, but no, no, do you know what I'm saying? Like these kids, everyone else is seventy. Yeah, literally, <laughs> all these kids, all these kids kind of looked up to me in a sense because it was like. Um, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I came from a decent background, but nothing wealth and all that sort of stuff. And these people was all educated. The relatable. Rest, yeah, yeah, relatable. That's the word I'm looking for. Not a cool kid. <laughs> and, uh, but I know how fucking. I, I know how corrupt it is mm. up there. Do you know how how was it down here for you? Growing up in care, I just became a mute, bro. Um, I didn't have a childhood. People say they had a childhood. Childhood doesn't mean going from zero to twelve. That's just an age bracket. Of course. Childhood is being secured in a loving home environment, having a father figure there to tell you that you're... But to set the disciplines and tones in your family, the mother's there for emotional support from different avenues and stuff. Like they say, like, obviously, you show me the boy for seven years, I'll show you the man. Mm. Because kids absorb, they don't, te- they don't learn in that kind of way. And my mum was an alcoholic. My dad was never present. My mum was by far and a fucking amazing mum when she wasn't drunk okay. or taking drugs or... Because she had a lot of things wrong with her, and she took like um, she had spondylitis and stuff like that. She she had high medication for a certain stuff, but she'd do that for drinking and all kinds of stuff. Okay. She wasn't really present as a mum because she was an orphan. She had her own fucking problems. You only realise that when you go through your own shit in life. And I just wish I was the person I am now, back then because she. Oh, don't, don't we all though, mate? Hundred percent. Don't we all, mate? And they always say you should never live with regrets. Ever fucking everyone lives with regrets. Um, Aunt Middleton said it in a podcast. I've got no regrets. You fucking bet you have. You, you're yeah. mad, bro. Yeah, of course. That is so... He's trying to keep that bravado, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's, I get it, but like, I love him, bro. I think he's amazing. Yeah. But saying that is just, it's just diminishing. But the care system for me, it was hard because I, I went from I thought was a loving family. Like my stepdad um, brought me up, brought me up a little bit. Um, my mum was amazing at the time, and she was going through her own problems. Um, my stepdad was abusive my mum was abusive there was violence I've seen sexual assault I've seen a lot of things going on in that house which are a little kid shouldn't my mum took me and my sister away from that environment and then um, within about a year um, I got talked into the care system because my mum started to collect her so like, we wouldn't get picked up from school all kinds of stuff like that so that slippery slope because course. of the drugs and alcohol yeah she was, wasn't present she yeah. was at the house getting drunk or wouldn't take yeah. us to school there was no food our clothes were dirty and it got mm. picked up um, and I got uh, took into the care system and Spawn Street. I remember it in Spawn <coughs> um by uh, my what would he be called? Sir, um, he was liaised to me at the time. It Mike Laracy. I'll always remember his. I don't know how I'll remember his name, but Mike Laracy will always save my fucking mind because he was the guy that took me into care. Um, it was probably a pivotal moment in your life. Yeah, it was. I can remember it now, bro. Yeah, I've literally, I've literally just done a bit of a document mini documentary on myself, and I went back to. I've never been back there to a place called Wisteria Lodge. It's flattened now um, because of sex crimes that went on at the time when I was there and before it. And I got took into there and I was sexually abused, mentally abused from older kids and it was pushed... Fucking hell, that just hit me there. <laughs> this is why I say... I use the word corrupt Yeah. Um, a minute ago. The staff that I worked with were unbelievable. Yeah. 90% of them, unbelievable. 10% of them... <laughs> Foot as well as doing the job to be fair, mate, because you yeah. have to be some kind of special person to do that job. Um, but in my experience, ninety nine point nine percent of the kids in care locally, mm. they either go back to the abuser, mm. an abused child will always go back to the abuser. That's the saying, mm. or 
they'll lead a life of crime. There's a very small percentage of kids that are actually going to go and do something. Um, I can't mention his name, but I know a kid that's going up and, and, he's, and he's opened his own business. He's done fucking unbelievable, to be fair. Mm. But the majority of them, they don't go nowhere. Mm. So how did that change for you, man? Because you fucking, you, you, you've excelled, haven't you? Because it's like I, you, you, you... Do you think the military? Oh, fucking hell, mate. I'd be, I'd be doing life in prison if I didn't join the military. It's... Someone said to me the other day, you've really resonated with me, and I truly believe it as well. It's, you can use it as an excuse for a reason. And I used it as an excuse for a very long time. I manifested my life. I always mm. say that. All the shit that happened to me, I became that person. I was that energy yeah. system. I was sexually abused. I was homeless. I believed it, so it came true in a way. Um, but I just came a mute. I never had a childhood. Like You shouldn't mix... 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds with kids that are four or five years old that they've probably been abused and they start abusing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The table and stuff like that. And it's just, my relationships are not good with women. I don't have good relationship with women because every woman in my life has always let me down. My mum, yes, she was, a, she was an amazing mum, but she let me down on so many different levels emotionally. I was took out of the care system within about a couple of years to go and live with my sister. My sister couldn't deal with me, so I had to be put back into care. So it was constant back and forth with women constantly let me down. Like, I love my sister, she's amazing. But you can't expect her to take me on, and I get that now, but I still hold a little bit of resentment for me. And mm. going through the care system is just horrific, mate. It's just constant abuse. Not even that, from even going to like like family uni, family evenings at school and stuff, and even I had parents say shit to me, oh, your mum doesn't even like you. I remember like... Fuck off, mate. Yeah, but I remember... So there was a guy called Matthew Early at my primary school, his mum, because I was quite violent at school because I don't like being touched. Anyone touched me, mate, I'd fuck, I'm game. I was yeah, like yeah. six, seven, eight years nice old. I broke my head teacher's leg, threw down a fucking thing. Because yeah. anyone that touches me, it's just fight or flight mm. because I've been abused. Because the way you've been fucking treated all your life, yeah. Yeah, it always kind of passed on his anger, he's angry, his anger management, his care system, do you know what I mean? It's just like, I got victimised at school. I wasn't allowed to really go and play in the playground. So since I was in nursery and sec- well, sec- n- nursery, primary school and secondary school, I had to have someone sit with me so they could control my temper and my education because I was dyslexic. I really struggled learning. Mm. It took me a while to get it on. So I can relate to that. It's hard, bro, and it's I couldn't interact with kids because I didn't feel like a kid. Like They went back to their lovely home. I had to go back to somewhere where I was being abused. Mm. Shit like that. I didn't want to leave school. So when, when I was being took away from the school, I didn't want to be from school. Mm. And I wasn't allowed on the playground to integrate with kids sometimes. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Probably one day a week, I was allowed to go on the playground. That's, do you know what I mean? It's just, it's mad thinking about it now. I couldn't think my kids going through that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Couldn't do it. If a teacher said that to me, I'd bury the teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll really bury mad. you in the playground, like my kids playing in the playground. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, a... <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree, mate. Yeah. So, so like, the things that you acquire, the things that you're meant to acquire when you were a kid, is like uh, empathy, sympathy, and all that sort of stuff. Did you acquire that? Not at all, mate. No. Like, it was never. Like empathy and sympathy are, are completely different realms. It's. I don't feel sympathy for anyone in this world. Now, even now. Not one. To, it's, not it, it's something that you acquire. In your um, early early years of uh, brain development, isn't it? Hundred percent. Yeah. And uh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's it's, um, it's nurturing from your parents and all that sort of stuff, isn't it? So it's something that you acquire at that early age. And I've said it, I've said it a million times before. Like, I don't know his background, but like for like Sir Alan Sugar, mm. people are going to him. Obviously, he's an unbelievable, success, uh, successful businessman, and people are saying, "Oh, uh, I don't want to lose, uh, don't lose my job and all that sort of stuff. I've got fucking wife and kids at home and blah 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 blah." And he's like, "You're fired." Mm. Do you know what I mean? So he hasn't got that empathetic mm. reasoning. Mm. Do you do you struggle with it? I sh- I struggle with my emotions quite a lot. I can I can I can imagine that it's hard to know what empathy and sympathy is. I always not... think yeah, when someone comes into my life for a good reason, if you came to me and said, oh, "I just want to help you," I'm like what's his fucking motive? What's he? Yeah. I'm like that. I'm like that. What's, his, what's his motive? Is that yeah, what you're... always, and I've still got that now. Like when I, I he's he... not ro- It's not wrong. No, it's not wrong. But what you're doing then is really you're suffocating yourself. Yeah, your yeah, potential yeah. smothering. 100% like there's a, a one of my favourite sayings is you can go fast alone but far together you need people and communities that's what we're built on as human beings so I have a community I've never had a community so I'm trying to build a community through my mindset so all yeah, stuff people yeah, are bored yeah, yeah. and there's no bullshit with me my shit's I've done nearly 500 videos in the last two years and they're all about my emotions how to get it out and kind of stuff like that but like you're saying I, I've had to learn 
which my kids have really helped me learn a lot quicker is how to be empathetic, how to deal with my emotions, because I've got EUPD and ADHD. Okay. I really can't regulate emotions that well. What's so EUPD, sorry? So it's an emotion, it's like an emotionality personality disorder. Okay. So I can't regulate my emotions that well. I don't know where, even if you say you're happy to me, I don't know you're being happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in a way, like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. It's, it's very like, well, I have to try and feel it, and that's where spirituality come, in, come into me the last couple of years, is really being, working on my inner, not my mind. Because forgiveness is a big thing, but if you can't forgive yourself, your mind is in control of you. If you can forgive yourself, your being is in control of you. You're in control of yourself, and that's a, a big thing I try and speak to my clients about as well. Um, I've got a tangent now. What did you say? <laughs> no, no, no. So, <laughs> so, so it was obviously that Dan mentioned the, uh, about the homelessness, yeah, and yeah. I wanted to, instead of going from that to uh, yeah, yeah. rewinding again, I wanted to go from that to, to, to get to where you got homeless, but my question was, um, do you struggle being uh, sympathetic? Especially with, the, especially with what you do with the mindset soldier as well. Because yeah. I'm guessing people, well, I know people come to you and say, listen, I'm in a rough place and blah, 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 whatever. Mm. Is it hard for you to not understand? Resonate. Resonate, yeah. Resonate is the, the fucking the word. I can resonate, but there's no bullshit or excuses with my coaching. If straight I, down the pipe. Straight down the pipe. People have messaged me. I can't pin you Joshua and Francine Garner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking. But it has to be because that's my direct as a coach. If you can't take my first sentence and be like, you can't say that. I've had it before. I'll show you. Oh, mate, the feelings. <clears throat> I straight. Okay, you're it, you're you, can't it, coached, you, you can't be coached by me. I do have empathy. I can't remember where you're coming from, but you're using it as a, an excuse, not a reason. So if you're coming onto my coaching, I will say some shit that will bring up some shit. If you can't deal with it right there and you think I'm triggering you in a certain way, you need to have a reflection on yourself, right, I need to kind of move on from this or try and help it. But I get it. I really couldn't give a shit, mate. I'm here to help people. I'm not here to fucking smother you in cotton wool. That's not the world. I'm here yeah. to help you get past and be resilient and have a disciplined mindset. So what you're saying is, right, the way I'm seeing it anyway, tell me if I'm wrong, you tell me if fuck off if you want, but the way I'm seeing it is that you're... Straight down the pipe, like like Jack just said, you're straight down the pipe, you get to the problem mm -hmm. rather than beating around the bush, zigzagging, trying to make someone feel good mm -hmm. to suit their, like, their, because they want the attention for it and they want X, Y, and Z. So instead of you're going, oh, no, you should feel this, 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 you're going, bam, straight down the pipe and you're going, well, here's the problem. Mm -hmm. Deal with that rather than fucking making loads of excuses of why you should and shouldn't do stuff. Do you know what I mean? Is that right? Yeah, pe people focus on the feelings too much. Feeling, feelings yeah. are fake. Like, <clears throat> how you need to kind of, this is my perception of it, and I, I couldn't really care how people, because it's got me through some of the darkest days, is how you present yourself as a man is so important and how you deal with your feelings are very important. But with coaching, it can be quite hard because people think you need to be nice. I'm not that nice. Like people who know me, I am nice, but I'm straight to the point because I might have my, I think I may have ADHD, I'm very black and white. I can't do stupid conversations and mm. people get pissed off me. When they're trying to speak about random shit, within 30 seconds, I'm like, mate, shut the fuck up. Like, mm. what? I don't, I don't know what I'm getting out of this conversation. Yeah. Like, please shut up. Like, you can't if you're not gaining from it, you're not asked. Yeah. I have to have an edu like someone that has to educate me. You have to learn from someone in conversations, or I just can't deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is what I give to my clients. It's very straight for me. Bam, bam, bam. You need to do this. Fuck off your feelings. They're not important mm. because your feelings are just emotions and things. getting in the way. Yeah, exactly. Once you distract yourself from the feelings, then who are you? Never, never make a judgment or an action on a negative feeling. Mm. And that's what I, that's what I say to my clients. If you're doing that, you're having that vicious circle. Yeah. It's like going shopping when you're hungry. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? You ever been shopping when you're hungry? Yeah. You get fucking mini a rolls, a Kit, Kit Kats. You're rational, aren't you? Yeah, you fucking sense. get all the shit. Yeah, and you yeah. get home and you're like, fuck it all. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking, it's absolutely bang on, mate. So, <clears throat> like, how he's, how, you, did, you did the right thing, to be fair. Like, I, for, I actually forgot about that. Mm. Do you know the children's services stuff? But I'm glad you, because you, you did that. That's why you, you kept hold of it. But I want to talk about the homeless stuff. Mm. Like, wh what, what led up to that point of you becoming homeless? How did you end up doing that? How did you end up becoming that? Sorry. Decisions, nope. I think, mate. It's not just decisions from... It's not just decisions from myself. It's the universe or God. 
Do you know what I mean? He's made me into the person I am today, him or the universe. Obviously, the universe is energy is the only thing that's been created and can't be destroyed. And that's what I think God is. Um, it's just weird how life can go sometimes. So if I just step back a little bit and... Um, the amount of like foster carers I was in, temporary accommodation, foster homes, rehoming, it was not nearly, I think it was like 15, 16 homes I was in over, do you know what I mean? It's nearly Fucking one hell, year. That's a lot, in it? And that's why I just, I've always been homeless, even though I had a house to live in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know that feeling, bro. It's you horrible. don't feel like you're at home. Yeah I've, yeah, I've always lived in a bag. I still do it now. Like, my ex has just moved out at the minute, which is a big transition in my life, because now I'm not getting to see my kids every day. Mm. So I'm in my house by myself. I still live in my room in a plastic bag. Mm. I've still get that. I've still got that concept. Do mm. I had? And it's going through that, and it's trying to get a relationship back. My mum, when I was like 15, she hid her, um, her habits, negative habits, quite well with her drinking. She'd hide around and stuff like that. Got in contact with her again, and she became quite abusive, neglective, um, which isn't no her own doing. She just did deal from her trauma from her childhood. And um, I didn't speak to her for about six months. I actually converted to Islam um, when I was 16. Yeah. Um, that was a big transition for me because it gave me a community, gave me a family. I've never had so much love and appreciation from a community than I did from the Muslim community mm. from doing that. They would just ring me up, not wanting anything. And that was weird for me. And Big um, switch up that, innit, for you? Mad, bro. Like, I just thought, like, what, what, what's the big plan here kind of thing. Mm. And I went to go and speak to one of the mullahs, uh, Daoud, his name was, which is um, my name. Dawood as well, which is David in Arabic. Oh, okay. I went to go and speak to him because one of the mullahs there, um, he wanted me to speak to him. He's another white brother. He was just mm -hmm. like, how, do you, how did your family think about you convert to Islam and stuff like that? I said, look, I grew up in the care system. I said, I live with my stepdad at the minute. He's took me out for a little bit to so a little fine house in. So I don't speak to my mum. She only lives around the corner. He said, like, you really need to go and speak to your mum. I just feel like there's something uneven in the universe or something like that that God, you can just go and speak to her. And um, literally two days later, she dropped dead. Your mum did? Yeah. It just fucking it was just like. Phew. From what, if you don't mind me asking? A heart attack. Right. And um, she had problems before that. Um, but it was just a mad transition. I remember the knock on the door from the police officer. He, you, know, you know a police officer's knock. You do actually, don't you? you know That's the dead we heard. That, I've never thought that about that before. Yeah. You actually know when a copper knocks at you. You're like, fucking hell, it's police, don't you? Yeah, straight yeah. to the point. Ba bam, ba bam. Like, yeah. you know, for fuck's sake, what have I done? It's intentional. Yeah, you just know. <laughs> and I remember watching Footballers Wives, I think it was about half seven, eight o'clock at night. This is back in the day, Footballers Wives, bro. And I was at the top of the stairs, I heard the door knock. I was like, fucking hell, what have I done? And uh, he was just like, oh, does David Smith feel over here? And my stepdad said, yeah. He said, um, we've got some news about his uh, mother, Maria. Uh, she passed away and it just, you can't comprehend it, bro. At 16 years old, like your mum just died. The conversation went on the police officer. I just lumped in my throat. My energy just went. I couldn't mm -hmm. believe it. My stepdad shouted up. He went, David. I said, I heard. So you heard it from the top of the stairs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it. It still gets me sick, so I'll never, I'll never get over it. You won't ever heal from that, losing your mum. And I remember running from Holbrooks in Coventry all the way down to Paradise. It was about the furthest ever fucking run, bro. Ran all the way there, did not stop. Trying to knock the door, look for the letterbox. Just, I just couldn't comprehend it. You didn't believe it? No, I didn't believe it. And that's why it's so important to be present in your life. And even if you are going through hardship with your parents or your friends or your family, or your kids, it's just be present because don't hold on to that resentment. It's just you're holding on to anger. If you hold on to anger, it heavier it gets. Mm. And I wish I never hold it on to that anger, which could have probably saved my mum, I don't know. Because in her journal, she had a purple, purple journal she'd written, and literally like two weeks before she died, which was two, three weeks before she died, because I was born on Valentine's Day, she'd written on there, I really, really miss my little boy. Um, I'm feeling really heartbroken at the minute. And that just resonated, like she died by heart attack. Because that, that's how the universe works sometimes, you know what I mean? It was sent to me. It's hard because... In Islam, they say it's a test. I couldn't comprehend it, bro. Mm. I really couldn't. And it's upsetting, isn't it? It's just, I'll never get over it, bro. My mum gives me light, bro. Every time I go to a grave with my sisters, they redirect me, bro. Yeah. Massive. That's two weeks. I didn't see my, I went to go to my mum's grave for about two years. Went there to go and see my sister and my mum. Um, these numbers kept coming up. And that's why I've got them tattered on my eyelids. I got them done after I went. 333 and 666. And the 333 is my sister. 
and the 6'6 is my my mum. And they just completely redirected. I said, look, you need to give me God. I meditate there a little bit and I said, look, you need to give me God. Was, give me some clarity where, what direction I need to go into. My, my life just crumbled within two weeks. Mm. You can see it as a negative or a positive, but luckily financially, emotionally, friendships fucking went this way, finances went that way. It when was, was this? Last two weeks. Yeah, okay. And it, it completely fucking just changed the rest of my life. Everything's been took away from me. Mm. You can see it as a negative or positive, but it's me now to try and rebuild mm. in a way. And um, my sister's daughter, Caitlin, uh, messaged me out of the blue. I haven't heard from her yet. I haven't heard from her for about a year, so I was just like, Kate's sending me some messages here to like speak to Caitlin. And she deleted my Facebook because oh, I can't remember what reason. I think she just went to a, a little world. And she sent me a friend request. And in her bio, it literally says, Caitlin, free, free, free. Mm. But I already had this tattooed and it was resonated with my sister. My sister said, like, get free, free tattooed. It means something. But then Caitlin sent me a message and her bio says, free, free, free. The universe works in fucking mad ways, bro. Yeah, it does, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That was just like, mad. But mad, yeah. Mad. Mate, that got yeah. me a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you, mate. Fucking hell. <clears throat> I've been through a similar thing, to be honest with you, and it fucking, my dad died. And um, he wrote in his journal, and I read it. Fucking hell. Cripples you, innit? <clears throat> Fucking hell, sorry lads. Nah, man. <coughs> Stop saying sorry, bro. It's just emotions, man. Yeah. <sighs> How'd that make you feel, like, when you read it? I can't talk, woman. it? <laughs> yeah, it was horrible, mate, because... <clears throat> so, I've never spoke about this before, either. I spoke, spoke about it to my mum, to be fair, but... So, I, like, when I, when, I was, when I was 18, my, I had a child and he died. And that, that fucking messed me up, bro. Yeah. But looking back, the way I dealt with it was terrible. The, the girl I lost it with, terrible. You know I was like Johnny when I was fucking younger. Yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I all that. Yeah, yeah, mate. Yeah. I, was, I was a fucking nightmare. Like, looking back, the way I treated people around me, the person who I was with who lost it, just horrible, horrible look on, do you know what I mean? Looking back, I would have changed. That's when, you know when you think about regrets and stuff when you were saying earlier, that's probably one of the things that, that look back at, the way, I, the way I acted after that and I went from doing that to 10 years of fucking partying and doing all that sort of stuff. Even though I was in the forces and all that, I still did it all. But then when I, when I left, I, I, was in, I was still in the forces and um, my dad, me and my dad fell out and um, I'm not going to try and not make this about me because it is... No, um, but it's an open conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... I'm asking you to speak about it. Yeah, yeah, of course. So it's about me now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so the, tw I was 23 at the time. It was, it was two, it was 2013, and I'd fell out my dad for something that he, he wanted to do. Mm. So my brother, he, he had become mentally ill through drug induced, drug induced psychosis, mm. and um, then my dad was going to try and move country, and I was fucking raging. Of course, yeah. And me and him fell out. And I didn't speak to him for a year. And I was based in Cyprus at, the po at this point. Mm. And then the next time I spoke to him was over Skype. Mm. And he told me he had cancer and he was going to die in six months. Mm. And then everything got squashed. You know what I mean? Forgot about the shit that he was thinking about doing. Anyway, he didn't end up moving away. Wouldn't that stuff. have been amazing, though, if you did it at the start? Do you know what I'm saying? What? If... It, if it's, if us as humans, at the start of that disagreement a year ago, you just dropped it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But this is also yeah. what I was saying about the regrets. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Exactly. It was my ego and yeah. everything else, right? And um, and then, obviously, he, he, I, I moved back to the UK with with uh, the poachers and all that sort of stuff. And then he and then he called me. Got he had cancer. And then I went. Not going to lie to you, I went AWOL. Mm started doing things that I wouldn't normally do and I was just going back and forth visiting my dad and uh, then he obviously passed away mm. and he left a journal mm. and I, I, I fucking, I didn't, I didn't read it for years because all his shit was at his ex the fear, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And I just didn't want to read it. I didn't have the guts to read it. Do you know what I mean? I still haven't finished it. But anyway, it was 2000, fast forward five years, six years, 
I remembered that all his shit was at his girlfriend's at the time and she was contacting me and stuff. So I went and get it all. I went to get it all. And then, I, you haven't even heard this story, have you? No. And, That's not Sesamus. Yeah. <clears throat> and I fucking picked up that, that journal and he was a big Christian, he was a reverend. Mm. So throughout my life, I had my mum who was a Christian, dad who was a Christian. Dad didn't spend much time with us. Two, twice a year. So I didn't really have a, da- a father in my life, technically, but I did. When I saw him, he was good, do you know what I mean? Mm. But he lived away with his wife and stuff. But when I read this, he was writing to God about why am I going through... Because he did a lot of stuff when he was younger and mm. he was trying to repent, do you know what I'm saying? And he was reading... And the way I read this, he was kind of... He, 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 was, he was saying sorry, but he was saying... He was, he was asking... He was like, why am I... Why are you... If cancer, if cancer's, if you are God, mm. the way if he, 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 it's like he was rejecting his religion. Do you know what I mean? He was like, "Why am I dying at fifty? Mm. Like, why am I dying at fifty? Same, same age my mum died. Yeah, why am I? This is why I'm kind of why I'm talking mm. about it. Like, when wh- why am I dying at fifty? If I become a reverend, I've saved you for thir- for thirty years now to to repent or whatever it was, mm. fifteen years, thirty years, and and you're still killing me, sort of thing. Mm. And when I read, I, re- I didn't read it out loud. But I couldn't talk. That do you know that throat that you said? Do you know you said you had that fucking uh, mm. lump in your throat, and that's what when you said that, mate. Fuck it, my my lump came back, mm. and that's why I'm talking about it now because it hit fucking resonated. Do, from, is what you haven't done that that with there is the process of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The emotions it, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, and then, and then I read it and it fucking hit me. And I still after that point, I stopped at the point where the fucking lump hit me. I haven't read it since. I'll read it again one day, but I'll be in a better place to read it. At that point, I wasn't. Do you know what I'm saying? And that just fucking that the nostalgia or the, the it resonated with me massively to what you were saying. And it, it, I can't believe you've been through that much pain as a child, mm. and then and then as an adult as well. Mm. And before, when I was watching your videos, you know your mindset soldier videos, before I even knew who you was, mm. or before I knew that you knew Charlie or Max or whatever. Mm. I didn't know you was, so I was thinking like, who's this guy? Do you know what I mean? You, you do on social media, don't you think? I, I find is it he, like same way, mate. You think, yeah. who, is he legit? Mm. Where's, his, where's his knowledge coming from? Where's it? Some people are chat shit, don't they? Mm. And, and I'm not saying I thought that, but you're still curious, aren't you, about anyone yeah, on social have media? You have to be. You have people. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's how you're human, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then like, and just now that, when you're telling us this stuff and you're opening up and you're telling us about your childhood and where you, where you've been brought up and all that sort of stuff, fucking, hell, I don't know anyone that's I don't personally I don't know anyone that's worthy enough to be doing what you're doing as as well as you mm. personally. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So the whole PTSD thing, the whole childhood thing, homeless, the forces, everything, it's all amalgamated into this one position and this one point. Amalgamated is the right word, isn't it? It's amalgamated into this position where now you you are able to help other people going through what you're going through. Do you know what I mean? And that and that for me is just like yes, fucking. I don't think there's much, mate. Thank you for sharing that, bro. Especially on here, it's a big thing to put. Yeah, yeah, about. absolutely. <laughs> like it. Do you feel lighter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I hadn't even told but, any of these two about like, the falling. Thing, like, you need to read in that journal as quick as possible. I, I know, I know, I know. I've been thinking about it for the last month, mate. Yeah, but and that's and today's quick, solidified it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. As quick as possible. Yeah, I know. Because what you hold on gets heavier. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Do you know what I mean? For sure, mate. Just, just going off what you just said as well. Um, giving Dave props by saying like you don't know anyone who's gone through what Dave's gone through. <clears throat> and as much, that, yeah, as yeah. Much yeah. And doing as that, I know people that's had fucking traumatic lives um, similar to yourself Dave but you can either be you can either you can either be the fighter or you can be the victim mm. and I think a lot of people choose to be the victim and I can't wear them shoes I can't walk a mile in your shoes um, my fucking shoes are completely different to yours We're all, yeah. everyone's shoes are different however like you've chosen to be the fighter not the victim am I right? I've tried I've met I've tried to do that all my life not like, it's Great analogy. It's like the victim or the uh, the the victim or the victor kind of the, thing. The, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, it's the same, the same fucking thing, bro. Yeah, it's yeah, just different yeah. words. Um, <clears throat> but I've only what am I thirty five now? I just turned thirty five, and it's just it's just mad. Like thirty 
34 years, 33 years of my life is constantly victimhood. Even the shit I was going through, I was a constant victim. I would, would lash out, do you know what I mean, at people and being that. Until I came off all my medication when I left the military and started to do inner work, figuring out the person I am. I really struggle with journaling because my writing and stuff like that, I can, but I've been journaling now for like two years because everybody I've done is just me. If I'm going through something, I'll fucking put it out there. Does so it help? It. Yeah. It's helped because it's helped. I know it helps me. others, but does it help you? It does help me get it out. Um, but I have to do a lot of inner work by myself. I get up really early or go to bed, whatever. I have to do inner work and try and I try and dissociate my mind from my body because my mind isn't me. The mind's out there. Like my body is mine, and how I kind of conceive it is is different. It's like meditation is really important. Like I struggle with it, probably ADHD, but I can sit there ten, fifteen minutes and really try and be at one with my my being. Not present, my being yeah. present. Yeah, it's it's fucking so hard to be ADHD, yeah. bro. I'm trying to wipe my ass, cook my dinner, I fucking send a text and an email in the same fucking minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's so I hard to be present. Yeah, no shit you can. Fucking hell. Fucking yeah. Mate, I feel, I feel like, I spend a lot of time with Dan. A lot of time. I ain't got no fucking disorders, mate, but I feel like I've got fucking autism when I'm hanging out. I mean, <laughs> this man, mate, this is what I have to go, I feel like I've got it now. Like <laughs> It's catching it. Yeah, man. It's like, do you know when someone comes around your house all the time, but they become part of the furniture? Yeah. I feel like it's part of the furniture in my mind. So it's weird, man. It's like, to be fair, we've got this fucking sick relationship and like, I want to change it for the world and it's damn fucking, it's just my best mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can, be, I can be vulnerable with me, can be vulnerable. Oh, he's not often vulnerable, man. That's the most vulnerable I've seen him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, <clears throat> I felt, like, I felt oh, like it was the right time. Yeah, yeah, 100%, man. Because that's how I was feeling, but you know what I mean? At the same time, being vulnerable is not a fucking sign of weakness either, is it? No, it's not, it's not a sign of weakness at all, but being vulnerable with the right people. Absolutely, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's very important. Um, I'm not vulnerable. Probably Charlie is probably the only person I turn to. Mm. That's about it. I don't turn to anyone in my family. Don't need to. I try and turn to myself now and turn the inner child and try and heal him. But I still need him to be um, the mentality of fuck everyone else. Keep doing what you're doing. That's mm. the mentality. Not just like, cuddle him sometimes. It is. I need to have that compassion for myself sometimes and to think like I'm fucking drained. But I run off empty all the time and I can do that. It's probably your superpower as well and your superpower. Mm. I, can, I, can, I can just run off empty, bro. No sleep, no energy, no food, whatever, I can still give. I get thousands of messages, bro. I'll probably to every single... Every person that private messages me, they get a message back. Yeah. Day or night, bam, bam, bam. I had people last night saying they're going to commit suicide and that. I can't... It's hard for me not to. Yeah. If I don't, I have a second, right, fuck it, right, call them. Shit that hate. It's very draining what I do. Does it affect your emotions? Uh, I've got... Yeah. Sorry, go on. Go you on. answer that question because I've got... Does it affect my emotions? Yeah. Yeah, because I take their emotions on. <coughs> so it, that, that, that's being an empath, isn't it? Yeah, I take a lot of people's emotions on, especially when I'm, I'm, I'm with people. So when I'm doing one-to-one -one clients, if they live close to me or I travel, sometimes I do my sessions with my eyes closed, bro. I don't want to look at them. I just want to feel their energy because people will perceive their self to be a certain way. I think that's also a superpower, mate. Mm. The, the, I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not talking about myself. It's just a quick one. But the amount of, pe the amount of people that say to me, like... You're, you're a bit off today because I can't feel your presence. I can't feel your energy, and I feel like I've got good energy. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, like I, I'm a I'm a big believer in professional walls. Don't matter what shit you got going on. Hundred percent. Yeah. Don't, it don't matter what you got going on at home and all that sort of stuff. As soon as you open the fucking doors to the podcast room to, to work to your family or to your friends, whatever, my walls go. My professional walls go up, and I don't tell them what's happening. Like, I don't go home and... If I'm having a hard time with Dan, I don't go home and tell Abby about it. My, my, my missus about it. My you don't even tell me about that's it. That's what I'm saying. I tell you. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm like, what are you being a dick for? So, 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 like, obviously, going back to what, you was, what I was just saying about being an empath, people are coming to you with all these issues and problems and all that sort of stuff, and I know that's what you... you your doors are open for that, isn't it? Mm. But I, I feel like being an empath is like a loading screen. Mm. Dan will come to you with an issue. It'll come up. Mm. I'll come to you with an issue. It'll come up. And you kind of, like, fucking drown yourself in other people's emotions how do you how do you deal with that I just do I can't you man up, man up yeah so like, I, I just couldn't give a fuck like if someone I'd rather heal someone else do you know what I mean I know I'm going to leave this earth with a lot of scars that are, are still going to be left in me like I can't do anything about that but scars become stronger and that's what I've kind of done with my mindset just I have no excuses my boundaries are so fucking high I've cut off friendships I've cut off relationships the last year that if you do not serve me in a way where it's going to fucking elevate me not just fucking I don't care about financially 
I'm all about emotionally, spiritually, and moving forward as a community. You ain't part of my group. Mm. Like, I haven't, like I said to you earlier, I haven't touched drugs or alcohol in two years. Yeah. Well, I can associate myself with them people. Like, I've been on stag do's all over here, this and that. 20 guys on fucking ketamine around the fucking thing, two, three days in, not slept. I'm, I'm sat there with my water, chilling. And they're just like, oh, you're so high energy. Yeah, you're not, because you're substituting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. I am the environment. Like, people yeah, come to yeah. me to get an environment. And that's the strong thing as men we need to have. We need to be the environment. We need to be the catalyst. Whatever environment a man needs to go into, he needs to be the holding block of it. Mm. I don't care what you're going through, you can do that after. If you're around your family, you fucking stand up, you make sure you give them the emotions and the fucking availability for you, then go and cry in your car. Mm. Come it, back. It, 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 do you listen to Jordan Peterson much? Yeah, yeah. So he's got this, he's got this saying he uses all the time, it's... Be when it comes to this, he uses the be the strongest man at your dad's funeral, mm. and that's kind of the same fucking thing. He's like, yeah. if you don't cry at your dad's funeral, I, I I didn't I didn't know about John Peterson when when, when my dad was dying. Mm. I didn't cry at my dad's funeral, mm. but I think about it every single day of my life. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. But not I don't cry about it, but he's there mm. all the time. Do you know what I'm saying? So. At that point, everyone's crying around. Everyone's really upset. Everyone's, you know, you know what it's like at a funeral. Mm. And I stood up. I stood up at the funeral and I talked about him, fucking cold, sound. Mm. And then after I went and did the same. Do you know what I mean? Th- then I cried a little bit. Mm. And then I not a little bit, but do you know what I mean? It was it was just one of them things like you're saying, like be be the man around that point. Be the st- people need to look at. Uh, in my opinion. People need to look at you as if you are the man of the house or the man of the family or whatever. They need to look at you for support. Mm. You're like a structure for them. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I think that's what people are now because of the way you've become, everything you've been through and who you are as a person. This is what I'm seeing anyway. Mm. Could be wrong, but all, especially now that you've you fucking your videos have been going viral mm. and all that. Now people are going. You, I bet you're running data with messages and mm. and requests and like you said about the suicide stuff. Now people are looking to you for that. So how does that make you feel that people are now looking to you for that? And because I get, I get them. Don't I, like if you've got a problem. Yeah. You, I get it all the time. But I, I'm not even down your route, and I still get that all the time because mm. I'm quite hard faced and like I, I'm straight to the point. I get people. Yeah, there's no bullshit. Yeah, I get. Well, I, I, I get think, people I, I ringing think me. People know that there's no flies on you either. Like I, I, I'm. To be fair, mate. Like I think it's all about growing up and um, <clears> how your childhood was and all that sort of stuff. But if someone comes to me with an issue. I'm trying to fucking, I'm trying to um, be as gentle as I can with them. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, whereas Dan and yourself is just like, boom, let's get straight down to the, let's get straight, fuck the nitty gritty, let's get straight down to the middle. Do you know what I'm saying? So Yeah, so I know how it makes me, my point is I know how it makes me feel when I've got three people ringing me with relationship problems, then someone saying, oh, Dan, I'm fucking going to commit suicide, I'm this and that. And to, like, one of my business partners, Dom, He's been on. He's been there when I've answered the phone to someone, and I've gone fucking hell. Anyway, yeah, I've talked to him for twenty minutes, and then half an hour later, someone else has called me about suicide. Like on the same day, I can't imagine what it's going to be like for you. Do you get what I'm saying? So, how does that make you feel? That's what I'm trying to get to. How does it make you feel? I'm not numb to it. Yeah, but I just know how to turn up. There's no. I think a lot of people, when they come to people with problems, and this, I do agree with therapy and counselling. But therapy and counselling is quicksand. You need to get out of it as quick as possible. In and out, bam, then do coaching. Because coaching is where you want to be, mm. where you are, sorry, and where you want to be. Yeah. And that's why I, I, I perceive where I am now, where I can help people get from there to there. I give people a direct answer. A direct, I'm not like, oh, how this, uh, yeah. this is what you need to do. Ain't that simple. That's what they say to me. Fucking is. If they don't want it to be choosing, that simple. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? How do you hydrate yourself? Mm. Drink a glass of water. Yeah. So simple, but yeah, you fucking yeah. don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the simple things in life that you structure yourself in your daily disciplines and they, every fucking day, no matter how I'm feeling, this is what a poverty mindset or a successful mindset, what you're going to do, a low, low energy or high energy mindset is this, is when you go in through your shit, you ask for help. That is a poverty mindset. But when you're doing well, do you ask for help? No. Nah. That's where it is. Mm. That's where the high leaders, the high successful people... When you're still at a high level, doing this shit properly, right, how can I get better? How can I do this? You don't wait until you're at a fucking breakdown, then ask for help, because you're always going to keep going back to that. Mm. Everyone that comes back to me, 
That's the reason you're there. Because you don't allow it. It's like, scoop, it's like what... scooping water out of a mop bucket when it's raining. Mm. And it's just filling back up, mate. That's like, what stick with me, that, what you just it's said. It's so that's true, bro. That's what stick with me big time. It needs... Yeah. That's what, when it sticks with me, it's in my head every day, like, why are you asking for help every time? NHS is shit. Oh, this is shit. That shit. Yeah, it is shit. Guess what? You're shit. Mm. You're the fucking problem, bro. There's a pattern. Yeah, you're the problem. So many people have come to me and I'm just like, I'm doing this, this and that. Can I just stop you there for a minute, mate? You're the fucking problem. You can't say that. Fucking did. Do you want to be coached by me or not? I can get you from there to there within fucking weeks. I know I can. Mm. But you have to give me the commitment. If you don't give me the commitment, guess what? Don't mm. need you. You're not ready for coaching because you're still in that victim mindset. I can get you out of it. Don't you think people... I can't think of the word now. It's just a runoff. Um, there's a word for it where people, like, uh, they hold on to the depression and they, they feel, like, that negative emotion. They that trauma. Yeah, and they, yeah, and they keep it. Like, rather than trying to fix it and get rid, like, they're, they're, they're like, I'm going to hold on to this for a bit. And they like, they like sitting in the room, like, being depressed and eating takeaways every night and playing on fucking video games. And they don't, they don't like going out and fixing the problems. They get comfortable. They get comfortable and it's like... What would you say to someone that's going through that and, and they can't, um, you know, you're saying, right, if you can't wait with me, fuck off sort of thing. Yeah. Have you thought about a plan for the people that need you that aren't going to... They're not for me though, bro. They're not for you. Is that is that it? You just don't work it's with them? It's a waste of my energy. Complete waste. Next total comes, sense. Yeah, if someone comes to me and I'm, my direct approach for my coaching calls, they get 15 minutes free to come on an onboarding coaching call for my calendar link. They book onto it. And they'll be like, this, this, and that, what's, what's your problems, bam, bam, bam. Right, this is what we need to do, bam, bam, bam. Mm. <sighs> You're not for me. Yeah. You've come to me for a reason, because I'm straight to the point. I've mm. never done one fake video, never done one every shit. I don't mm. fucking play with algorithms, I just do my shit. I don't care if it gets 100 views or a fucking million views. Mm. I don't care, I just say what's true and it comes out. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I've had people fucking all across the globe messing me, mate. Yeah. Celebrities, I'm just like, what the fuck? Well, you've been doing it for that long without Consistency, a return. Yeah. Like delayed gratification is what I'm like. What you've done, isn't it? Like you, you've been posting and posting and posting, and then I know you don't do things for the algorithm, but the algorithm hit you oh, yeah, on that video. Algorithm. You are the algorithm. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I was getting to next. It's like you are the algorithm because you create your uh, echo chamber, mm. and then now people are fucking seeing it from all over. Mm. That firstly, there was only a couple hundred people seeing it, and then a couple of thousand, and then that stayed for a while, didn't it? Mm. And then bam. Now everyone's seen it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Well, when I say everyone, you know what I mean? If people have seen it, they've seen it. Like, but in, in my opinion, it's, it's like going through, that, going back to the question that I asked you, um, with the people that stick to that negative emotion, like they don't want to get out of it. It kills you. My dad, <clears throat> he passed away when I was... Self-deprecating, isn't it? Yeah, he passed away when I was 19. I didn't know my dad. <clears throat> and when I was going through military training... Five minutes left. Don't worry about it, we'll just carry on. All right, so. Yeah. Um, going through many training, 19. Never heard of my dad since I was like four years old. He yep. just fucked off to London, had another kid. I didn't know he had another kid until I found out he died. And I found out yeah, I've got yeah, a yeah. stepsister. That I'm not, is it a stepsister? Half sister. Half sister, yeah. Um, and going through training, I think it was about two months before I was supposed to pass out. Um, rang up, I remember I was in the barracks at the time next to my bed space, rang me. He was like, your dad's dad. And I thought it was my stepdad, because I've always called him my dad, because yeah, he's been yeah, in and yeah, out yeah. of my life. He's never been fully into it, but he's an amazing man. Like, he's been in and out of my life. Like, I didn't see him from four years old till I was 12. Like, you're not my father figure, but you've been there. Like, you're a man. I get it. Um, and they said, look, you can take time off, but you're going to have to be back squatted mm. to go and deal with your dad. I'm just like, I had to have that moment in my life. Was like, he's never, ever been there. He's Sorry, never... I set an alarm for you. <laughs> no, it's right, bro. <laughs> he's never been there for me in my life, so why should I be for him there when he's... Do you know what I mean? So... Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. So I had to make that decision, so I was like, no, I'm carrying on with this. I need to fucking... This This is a plan A. I've got no plan B. If I if I don't pass this military train, I'm living on the streets again. Into them bridges, on Freyfus, people's fucking sofas, halfway houses. I've got mm. nowhere to go. Pass training. Luckily, I fucking did, and I passed with best recruit. I have 100 people, I've got the best soldier. And that was a big thing because people were moaning through training about living in harbour areas and fucking, I'm mm. like, bro. Your so, life's been a fucking harbour area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Get, change your fucking mindset. Like six months ago, bro, I was fucking eating out of a bin, bro. And you're yeah. here with fucking heavy packs and shit. Yeah, 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 fuck yeah, out, yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Um, got out of training, found out, obviously, about my dad. I went back and he actually moved to Coventry and this is where the plot twists with it. I used to play um, basketball a lot, like, 
I used to fucking love it mm. for fucking years. And there was a place in Coventry called Gosford Street. I used to go and play basketball every fucking day. My fingers were like fucking... They were fucked from playing basketball all the time. Yeah. Callus, he, calluses. Calluses, everything. And they all split. But he actually wrote a journal and a letter. So he must have knew... He was type, he was type 1 diabetic and he died of a diabetic coma. That's suicide for me. Mm. Mm. Because he's not took his insulin. He's neglected himself. He's died. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's fucked me off when I was a kid. Now he's fucked off his other daughter. Mm. But he actually wrote a letter to me because he must have knew he was dying and it literally said, he literally said, didn't it, I used to come and watch you play basketball every day. And Fuck. he didn't... And Never did... knew about it, bro. Never knew about it. Mm. He was standing there while I was playing basketball each week because he used to live across the road from the basketball court, didn't we know? And he used to come and watch me play basketball. Did you even know what it looked like? No, I'm a fucking clue. Until I seen a picture of him in his house when I went to go and collect his stuff. And, and then you recognised. Did you recognise him? No, I didn't no. recognise him. No, just like... He said, I, um, it's just a guilt. I, could, I never had the courage to come and do it. I was going to say, why do you think he it's didn't? Because yeah, he, he was insecure he's about something, wasn't he? He's not a man. Yeah. And I can openly say that's my dad. I said, I don't want anything to be like you. Like I may look a little bit physically like you, but your emotions do not carry on to me. I'm not carrying your trauma mm. over. It stops. Mm. And that's why I think I'm a good dad. My, my kids get me. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That I'm not dealing with that shit. Like, mm. That's you. Go to the grave, wherever you fucking go in. It's yeah, yeah. Like, I love and appreciate him. Obviously, he gave me life, so he's there for a reason, but I don't care if you, you should have... One step, you could have a conversation. And mm. that's what a lot of people don't get in life. It's the fear. Just do it, and you can deal with the consequences after, whether yeah. it's a positive or a negative. Either way, in that way, do you know It's like 100 or nothing, isn't it? Yeah, it's just... that. I think that gave me courage then. It was like, I can't be like this man, and that's what it, it set me into that tone for my military career. I was the soldier. I was a green soldier. My, my records were A-star, but when I was in camp, bro, I just couldn't deal with it. Mm. flat pack my room banging people out mm. anyone said anything to me I just had that reaction constantly like I had multiple convictions in the military from ABH GBH I was supposed to go to prison but it was all anger coming off tour drinking taking fucking drugs every day mm. waking up from but, the PTSD do you think? it's got to be because there was some substance I think ADHD plays in the park because I was looking for some going from the war zone where it's absolute chaos and you're getting constant fucking that adrenaline to coming home and sitting on fucking barrack guard mm. It's just not, so you just drink. Every day I was doing it. Like, yeah. I was going out as a per, uh, physical training instructor. I was going out doing CFTs, AFTs, this and that, coming back, taking cocaine, drinking. It's a part of mentality in the military that a lot of people don't talk about openly. Mm. Like, if, you don't take, if you don't drink in the military, you're not really part of the military sometimes. But it is changing a little bit now. But going through that, just pff, trying to commit suicide like three times just because I wasn't happy with myself. The first time was a scream for help. Mm. I OD with all my medication. I took all my medication over about, about a month. It was certainly metazapine. Sopiclone, it was antipsychotic drugs that were on trial from America. I was on so much medication, I couldn't regulate my emotions. I was fucking everywhere, like, do you know what I mean? And then uh, I just had enough of it, planned it. I was a bit of a coward. I had to get drunk before I did it because I didn't want to die. Like, I just wanted that pain to stop, like the night terrors, the constant, I couldn't sleep for days, the insomnia. I was still going out, doing my job, but I'd come back, get drunk, go back, not sleep. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, that thing, you, you turn up as a man every day, even when you're going through your shit. Mm you still get your job done at the end of the day, which men need to have, and it's just, I had a complete breakdown. I remember waking up in, uh, I think it was Basin Stoke Hospital, my stomach pumped, my brother-in-law was there, he was a, um, he was a sergeant at the time, they graded the guards, he's a company sergeant major now in two para. He was like, do you know what you've done? I just fucking cried, bro. I was just like, I can't be arsed, it's pain no, no more. He just fucking, I got sectioned, I was in the mental health hospital for a couple of months. Got a little bit better, started doing therapy, um, I wanted to ask about therapy out. It helped. It did, but it went on for years. Mm. For seven, eight years I was in therapy. Mm. Counselling, psychiatrists. It just... You're constantly reliving that trauma. You have to change over psychiatrists when they get, like, um, pushed out or they have to go and help someone else and you can't have him that day. So, well, I've just... Relationships are so important through therapy and counselling. Yeah, I was going to say that. Can't, that can't be, like, a positive thing for a... For a it's a trauma a, response for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone else has been always took from my life for my kids, so I'm trying to open myself up again, and it's took away, and it's put in, and took mm. away. It's just a constant re, re... What's the word? It's reinforming me that no one's ever going to be there for you. Well, I, I was just about to say, cause, because of your... You know, going through care, and you're going in 16 different homes and all that sort of stuff... Then you go into therapy, and they're doing the same fucking thing. Mm. It's like a, it's like nostalgia. Is it nostalgia? Negative emotion. It's, it's a vicious circle. Yeah, and it's like bam, bam, fucking hell. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't imagine it was great, mate. Mm. Can't imagine it was a great thing to go through. 
but you still you try and turn up and like the second time I just had a complete breakdown bro I was supposed to be going Pathfinders on January I think it was 2015 um, to go and do that and that was my way out like obviously. Pathfinders is that Recce? Recce for SAS yeah, yeah 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 I was on the course for that and just had a bit of a breakdown bro literally went up to mm. the med centre went on top of the car park and was ready to jump but the call before that I tried to bring my psychiatrist. I said to him, like, I need help. I'm suicidal. I can't fucking be here no more. He's like, mate, it's half four. My phone's not on. You need to go and ring somewhere else. Fucking. Do you know what I mean? I get it. I do get it now, but I'm just like, bro, yeah. This is what's the difference between me and other people is he had no empathy. Yeah. If that was me, I'd be like, bro, where are you? I'll come and see you now. Yeah. Where are you? I'm yeah. dropping it. Or, right, I'm going to get someone, call someone. He didn't even call like the barrack guard or. Shit like that, I just drove straight up to the med centre and was just like, fuck this. Cops had to t- kind of taunt me down. Got help, got sectioned again. I was there for, I think, about four or five months in Basin State Mental Health Hospital. That place is fucking weird, bro. Where's that? <laughs> that made me seem insane. Basin State Mental Health Hospital. Because you got military, there was a section for the military people, but then you got people with bipolar, schizophrenia, really bad mental health problems. We've got PTSD and some people like personality disorders. Yeah. I'm trying to have my breaks in the morning. The girls there fucking rubbing, fucking pub jokes over her tits and shit, going fucking spitting at me. Do you know what I mean? The mentality is fucking mad. I laugh about it. So I'm just like fucking yeah. hell. But it was good because I'm just like, bro, I'm normal. Yeah. I'm yeah. just going through some shit. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're like psychologically fucked in a way because they can't yeah. regulate their emotions. Their neurological pathways ain't right. They're not wired up right. Um, yeah, I've, 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 um, my brother's the same. It's just is 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 down that route. It's, it's, it's mad what it does to not, you. Not, he's, he's, yeah. he's functional in society now, but he wasn't. Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. So I understand that. But the drugs just comatose, yeah, that's what they had. But for me, I was there for months. Um, the drugs just literally comatose me. I wasn't the right, right person. It's just... But no one's... I had to... The, my psychologist at the time said, like, well, you really need to do intense therapy. I was doing two, three sessions a week. He said, but you need to call your family and tell them what's happening or your friends. You need to be open. So I rang my stepdad and my, my family in that and said, what's happened? Look, I tried to commit suicide again. I'm just, I can't, I'm in here, this and that. I was there four months. No one come to see me, bro. Do you know what I mean? No, none of my family came up to see me. It's only an hour and a half drive. Hmm. No one? No one, bro. Fucking no one. I was there day and night taking medication. There was only one friend that came to see me all the time, Chris James in the military. Uh, still one of my best friends. It's just... Yeah, again, I'm just reaffirming to my... The universe is like, bro, like, no one's coming to help you. When are you actually going to learn from these lessons? Mm-hmm. No one's going to be there for you constantly. And then my sister went downhill, Katie. Um, she was a black sheep of the family, just like me. She was a mother to me. She was a sister. She was a brother. She was everything to me. Um, she was an alcoholic. She went the same down my room. My mum doing drugs. There's a place in Coventry, Hillfields. It's a shit area, and it's... If you're not selling drugs, you're taking drugs there. Same thing, got fucking Grimsby, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, she just went that vicious circle and um, she got took into A&E at the time. Um, she had jaundice. Her whole body was just like yellow, like she was fucked. And the doctor said like, she, they had to put her into an induced coma because her organs were failing her. Really? And um, they wouldn't allow me out of the psychiatric board. I said, look, if you don't leave here, I will kill someone or you. Like, I was stone dead, like you need to let me on release. So I had to check in with the police every morning. They had to, I had to call her and say, I'm here. Um, they let me back home for the weekend. Went to go and see her. Um, and I remember at the time, I, I don't know, it was a weird transition because the same thing you were saying with your, your dad's funeral, like you need to be a man in front of people. And that was the same thing with me. I said that mentality, my brother broke down. He was, they were arguing, the, the, the random shit. And I just went, bro, shut the fuck up. Mm. Like, Kate is what we need to think about. Not yeah. you and your fucking emotions. Stop being a bitch or put you in the fucking bed next to her. Mm. Like, it's about Katie, not you again. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. And she went away. Katie, she came out there. It was touch or go with her. They said, look, we've got to take her off the, um, the, um, the, the support that we're giving at the time. He said, look, she doesn't come out of the coma. She, whatever. And she came out of the coma, luckily, but she just went back into drugs, mate, and alcohol. The, we couldn't stop it. Hmm. We couldn't be with her 24-7. But my family was only around her when she was doing bad, not when she needed it. Yeah. Mm. Every weekend I'd come back, be my sister. I'd I'd drink around her, and drink with her, so she could do it with someone and responsible. Because she used to run to the shops in the morning, five o'clock, get some vodka and yeah. being away. That's where it's quite bad. If you can be around someone, I tried to help her certain ways to try and be around her as much as possible. When I came back from the military, 
Then within a couple of months, she just went down it again. Went straight into fucking hospital. All the organs are absolutely fucking fucked and peppered. And they let over, like, um, all the toxins in your organs. Once they start filtering out, you're delusional. Like, she would, she'd wake up, she didn't have a clue where she was. Mm. So she had to go into a hospice. And when she's in the hospice, you know, like, she's, she's going out. And um, she always says to me, when, when, when we were going through this transition, when she was getting, like, quite conscious, she said to me, just this... Um, just never change. Like when she used to come out, she used to say to me, like I was always there. He said, stop doing what everyone else wants you to do. Just keep being mm. you and just never change, Dave. Um, kept doing the same sort of gym morning routine. I remember I was at the gym at the time. My stepdad rang me, he was just like, you need to come to the hospice. And I just knew, like it was like half eight in the morning. And you just build yourself up. Walking into the hospice, the fucking air con opens with the doors. I can still fucking feel it. You're walking through the room. Just cold, bro. Just mm. went there and she's gone. This sister? Yeah, my sister came. Yeah, yeah. She died at 32, man. And um, You've had a lot of death in your fucking life, Yeah, constantly, mate. bro. My, si- my sister really hit me, bro. Um, but it's all trauma. Mm. And you can be... You can stop that generational trauma through your life. And this is what I'm trying to do with my family is stop it. It's not carrying on with me. Yeah. My sister was fucking... And mate, she was fucking life of party. Never go out a smile, but never go out a drink. Mm. We were drugged. Same again, I wish I was the person I was now to help her because I know for a fact that I should be still alive if I was yeah. the person I am today. It's not that I regret it, I'm here to help other people, but it'll always fucking. She, they give me power. My mum and my sister give me power when I go to their grave and I try and be a one with them. They give me fucking power and redirection every single time. Um, then a couple of years later, it's just like my, my niece committed suicide. Do you know what I mean? I've had people in my family sexually abused and raped, I'm not going to speak about the name, it's just that constant trauma, I'm just not, I'm not allowing that to be around my life anymore, I was just segregate myself from the environment, try to better myself, I just don't take drugs no more, I don't take drink, I don't allow anything of no substance that isn't going to help me come into my life, mm. but that's a friend, I'll cut you off, I don't care for 15 years, if you're still acting the way you are when you're in your 20s, yeah. when you're in your 30s, bro, stay there. I'm 100%. Here. Do you know what I mean? You need to cut that off because they're only going to hang you back a little bit. So a little bit? It depends with the mentality, but I get what you're saying. Uh, it depends if you're in your circle or not. Yeah, 100%. Like, that's, that's what I'm thinking. They, they do say, like, the fact it's the main five people you are that are in your circle, you are that person. 100%. And you become... You don't think you are. No, you don't think you are. But you are. But you fucking are. Energy absorbed, bro. If you're around people that do drugs all the time and you're there at the weekend and they're just like, oh, let's get on it. That mentality. Don't like it, but... I create my own atmosphere. Mm. I create my own environment. No matter where I'm if people fucking don't like me, like I've had friends that I fell out with and shit like that, I still rock up straight next to them, bro. You ain't fucking with my energy. Like, I'll just put mm. people dating in the face. I'm not scared about fighting anyone. I don't give yeah, a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can't harm me, bro. Like, chill. Your reaction to me is your boundary. That's all it is. Anger comes from a boundary overstep. That's all it is. Mm. I'm fucking with your boundaries because mm. you're getting angry. You ain't fucking with mine. I'm chilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's what you need to have, a, I think, as a modern-day man, is boundaries and stick to them. Once you fall over them... I was saying this last night. Mm. I was literally saying this last night about boundaries. They're so important in your life, but you need to make sure they correlate with you and your your person you are and the person that you want your kids to be. And the your purpose. You. Yeah, 100%. What do your kids do for you, Dave? Fucking absolute strength, bro. This may be conflicting when I say it. Your kids are not your purpose. And I, I say this if you're thinking from a deeper level. Someone told me this before. Someone told me, someone told me look after number one. Mm. And I was thinking, how can I look after number I am My kids are number one. Mm. They're, they come first and he's like, nah. You ain't got your kids if you ain't got you. You're number one. So, you're, you're number one. Your kids come second or third or fourth. It's not being third. selfish, but it's, it's what? selfless. It's My kids are my strength. That Any person that says their kids are their purpose, you haven't found your purpose or you haven't found your haven't. Your kids give you fucking strength. Unbelievable, Yeah, mad strength. That's that's strength. It's not purpose. Purpose is something that's aligned with you. Like the God in the universe gives you your purpose. It's already a gift given to you even before you're even here, even before you're an organism or a fucking cell. Your purpose is here to be for a reason and the meaning of life. My kids are here for a reason. Every struggle that's come into my life has been a reason. My kids are a reason to direct me in the right way. Like way the way I'm around them is the way I wanted my parents to be around me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. I give them as emotional support when I can. It. I find it very hard to be a dad with ADHD. 
I struggle to be very present with them sometimes. I'm trying to do this, this and that, clean up. Like when they make a mess, I'm just like, fuck. But then it's just like, relax. I've still got handprints of jam that I haven't cleaned off my fucking side place for like six months because it's this handprint. I'm leaving it there to recognise. <laughs> yeah, just to recognise like, just leave it, just chill, be in the present moment because that, that handprint makes me feel like, be present, be present. Because if you're just constantly cleaning up after your kids, you're cleaning up the memories in a way. Do you know what I mean? You're not allowing yourself to be in the present moment. Let kids be kids. My kids throw food around and all kinds of shit, even if they're in a restaurant. So what? I'll clean it up, mate. Chill. Or I'll pay for another meal. Let them be kids. Like we were talking earlier about, I'm going to touch the subject about people who with um, like transgender and all shit like that. Yeah. Like, let kids. Here we go. <laughs> but yeah, it's got to be bro. No, 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 <laughs> but it needs to be because I've got my opinions about it. Yeah, yeah can't. I love and appreciate everyone on this earth. Mm. But that is your opinion. If you want to be called that, be called that. But I'm not calling you that if I don't believe in that because yeah. I believe in a different Agreed. ideology or a different opinion. I respect you. I want you to do the best in life, and I will help you, whatever way I can help you. But don't push your judgments exactly. onto me or my kids. Mm. Mm. Because you're trying to change their mind and their creativity. Kids need creativity, not your judgment. Yeah. In a way. So, what's your beliefs on that, bro? Which one? <laughs> the creativity or the transgender? The transgender, and how society wants to teach our kids. I love days. that smile though. After you said that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hit that one off, mate. I'll hit that one off. You've but, had personal. You've yeah, had genuine man. personal experience yeah, with this, so you can hit that off, mate. So I've, I've got four kids, mate. And um, and what you said about raising your kids, you want to raise them better than you was raised. Mm. For me, I want to raise my kids how I was raised. Okay. I, I had a, not financially, just, I had a, just a fucking loving home, man. I still have. Finances don't make a home. Do exactly. You? Exactly. Good point. So, so so I do I do that for my kids. I try my best to do that for my kids. And um, it's fucking black or white, mate. To me, yeah. um, the kids go to school. Um, the, the older activity is like my two boys do jiu jitsu, the oldest one boxes, um, my daughter fucking swims. Do you know what I mean? Like, and um, and then they're going to school. Is she that fast? Yeah, mate, she's like. fucking, <laughs> mate, fucking fast, man. <laughs> but so, so, so I, I, I do my best outside of school and trust the school to teach my kids life lessons, not life lessons, but fucking you, guide them. You guide, guide them, your English and maths and all that. Shit like you need. The basic. The basics. Mm. And uh, anyway, one of my lads came out of school a couple of months ago saying, uh, oh, we've been told that it's uh, it's okay to be trans. Like, it's not fucking... To go home and dress up and that one. Yeah, yeah. I was in the car with yeah, him. Yeah. We was not welcome. that age. Mate, not at fucking any age. The thing is, mate, for me, for me personally, like, it's mental health in my, in my opinion. Mm. People, a lot of people are going to give me shit for that, but it's, in, my, in my opinion, it's mental health. Mm. So Fuck if you want to fucking dress up as a woman, mm. dress up as a woman, man. Don't bring it onto my fucking kids. Don't push it out there. You know, there's all these gay prides, mate. Be gay. I've got gay family members. I've got um, homosexual, lesbian, mate. I know that that's cool. It's just when it's pushed down. You, as like, long as you're happy. Yeah, 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 man. It just wear a fucking dress. Johnny wears stilettos, man. Fucking continue <laughs> wearing your stilettos. Um, it does, man. It's a true story. But I, I, I mean, I don't care. But that, I, I don't. I don't want. If I if if I leave this place now and there's a guy that I know is a guy dressed up as a woman, yeah, we'll pass each other and he'll go on with his day. I'll go on with my day. I've got no fucking negative thoughts to this person. However, if my kids go to school one day and there's a six foot five guy dressed in a fucking skirt and heels mm. teaching my kids and telling him and telling him that what yeah, they're doing is now, normal. Now 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 sh- this is going to be different. Mm. I'll probably be wearing an orange jumpsuit. No, but I, I agree with that. In a certain aspect, as in kids absorb, they don't learn. They're impressionable. 100%. Their emotions, how you speak to your kids, are you at your kids, what you show your kids, they will do like... Just, let me just, 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 just yeah. answer this for me, sorry, mate. Yeah, no. So, put a fucking, put a boy in a room, right? Put a young boy in a room and there's fucking loads of uh, girls dress up, fucking Cinderella and all that sort of stuff in one corner and cars and fucking toys and action men in the other corner. Mm. Where's, the, where's the boy going to go? Wherever he wants to, it's the creativity of it. He's going to go to the fucking... He doesn't see that as a human would see it or an adult would see it. Mm. He sees it as playing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As creativity. Yeah, yeah, he can go there and play with the skirt. He doesn't know the meaning behind it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But as an as a adult, we teach them what the meaning is. And mm. that's what society is trying to do at the minute. They're trying to integrate it into 
you shouldn't do it as a child. Absolutely not. I won't. I won't stand for it in my school. I don't care. Nah. It's not being around my kid. Yeah, yeah. When he's older, if he's got problems with his identity or his personality or mental health, we will deal with that. But don't try and change your exterior to think your interior is going to change. You're still that person from the inside. Your cells, the organisms, your neurological pathways are still going to fire, fucking fire that way. You ain't changed. Like a lot of people with transgender, if they're going through that transition, make sure you're mentally right before you make that decision. And I think that's the, the things where a lot of people don't know who they are these well, days. Well, the suicide rates for transgenders is super, super, super high. We get close. And, and Jordan, I'll jo- speak about Jordan Peterson again, but he said, and he's usually fucking bang on with his data, isn't he? Mm. And he said that 80% of people that have transitioned at a later date when they're older, when they become an adult and become, like, um, what's the word, mature, Regret. they realise that they're not transgender or what they're homosexual mm. and they revert back and they have the surgeries that bring them back to a bit where they was and they become gay or homosexual mm. and then they're back to that and that's 80% of the people that transition mm. and that should speak volumes do you I know what I mean? it shouldn't be so blasé no 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 with it for instance if you if you're going for that trans- transition I respect it because it's a big thing to do I respect yeah, 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 yeah. it but you should have some kind of Mental health assessment, mm. psychological analysis, yeah. what you've been through in your life as mm. a trauma, have you been through sexual abuse, what actually do you deem um, as sexual abuse and all kinds of stuff like that because it it changes you as a person. Mm. It changes me as a person. What I've been through through my childhood, I'm not very good in relationships with women. I don't see, for a long time I've seen women as an object or they're taking something away from me. It's mm. either sex or no relationship or that's, and I still get that concept I'm trying to learn and be a better man through it like I've fucked up a lot of my relationships I've my hands up to it I've cheated and stuff like that not because I've wanted to cheat it just because I self-sabotage quite a lot when things are going good I'll fuck it up and I'm really trying to learn about myself I'm not saying I'm the best man in the world but I'm trying to be the best man for me and my kids mm. and I care about the world yeah, yeah. and you're and to go back on to the whole mindset soldier thing mm. and you're using all of that all that past trauma all that all them past experiences and negative emotion and you're harnessing it mm. and trying to help people that have gone through something similar or mm. the same thing and you're trying to help them go forward and that's why you've created the mindset soldier as a an entity, I guess, is it? it it's reforming myself. Re- reforming yeah. yourself, yeah. And it's, it's been a hard transition. It just clicked one day. I was doing... Um, what made it click? I did a public speaking course because I yeah. lost my voice. Like I was a section commander in the military. I yep. did. I could do fucking, do you know what I mean? Presentations and up the battle and go on and stuff like that. I just lost my voice when I left the military and did a course to do with public speaking to try and get it out. Um, and... I was forced to tell my story. I didn't want to, like, he kept calling me out, look, I, can, I know you need to tell your fucking story. And I told my story with tears in my eyes and my emotions were fucking everywhere and shit like that. And after it, there was, I think there was about 20, 30 people in the, the audience and um, they just fucking were all just crying. And he said to me after, he said, look, you need to tell your story. Mm. If you don't tell your story, there's a lot of people that are going to die because you're not being that person that's helping them. And that just stuck with me. And then after that... Why wouldn't you? Exactly. Because I don't want to be seen that I'm not a victim. Mm. And that was it. I said, I don't give a fuck about my story. I don't, no one cares about it. No one cares about it at all. Like, it's just me. It's a story. You might resonate with a little bit, but I couldn't give a fuck. I don't try and let it set into my fucking body as much. And the fir- one of the first videos I did was about suicide on my TikTok. And I did it. And it just went fucking viral. And the amount of messages I would get in and... I couldn't stop then. And ever since then, it was just one video a day. Just locked in. Day. Yeah, just locked in. Bam, bam, turn my emotions, this and that. Everything I was going through, speaking, I'd close my eyes. Like, I don't try and come across as anything else. Like, sometimes I fuck my words up. I might not say the right words and the right things and stuff like that, but... Yeah, I we do. all do that, man. That's me. Yeah. That's me. I'm, I'm, an illi- I'm illiterate as fuck, man. Like, but as long as I can get my energy across and my emotions and let people resonate with it, that's more important than, than my vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> slow that down, exactly. Yeah. exactly and I think that's why a lot of people resonate in it you don't know who resonates and this is that out there's people that I don't even know like across the world like mm. the fucking actors and messaging me and just like bro like that video was just like mad and they're super successful mm. I'm just like all I can do is try and be me because if I ain't me I've lost myself in a way 
For sure. Yeah. And then if you're not you, you can't help the people that are trying to be them. They're not fake, bro. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That's why there's there's a lot of coaches out these days, these life coaches and mindset coaches. I don't really want to call myself a mindset coach just because mindset brand, but I've just... Got to call yourself something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. Call myself, so... yeah. I'm just here to help people. Yeah, 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 for it's sure. It's just that I, I consider myself as a bit of a coach because I'm helping people, but it's, it's the big brother mentality. That's what I've got. And that's what I want to be to people as a big brother. So with my coaching, what that consumes of, my high ticket one, if you want to call it that, is like three months intense. It's a re-engineer your whole fucking life. We do that. But you don't look, after them three months, bro, you've got me for the rest of your life. No other coach does that in the world. I don't mm. care who you are. You've got me. Day and night, if you want to call me, message me. Obviously, at times, I might get a little bit back to you, but you've got me for the rest of your life. Any problem you're going through, mm. let me know. But when you're succeeding, still lean on me. Dave, how can I get any better than this? I need to improve myself. Mm. And I'll be there for the rest of your life, and that's what they get with my coaching. Mm. And the opposite side of it, I've got like coaching calls where I do coaching calls with people if they want emergency help and if they want to speak through their shit and just be relatable in an open conversation. A conversation can literally release energy or emotion that you've been holding on for fucking ever and just like I get messages after phone calls you fucking help me there like that was mad like I didn't know what I'd do without you it's just it's mad that you can be Influ- that, so influential yeah in a way it's just I, I still have to pinch myself sometimes and I still get that limiting belief in my system like how the fuck am I doing this like it's imposter just, syndrome oh, it's a big thing big thing with people especially men these days do you know what I mean? A man that seeks pleasure will always fucking divert his purpose. Mm. I don't seek pleasure anymore. Mm. Anything that gives me instant gratification, I'm not really for it. Yeah. And it, that's helping my ADHD as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I, t- I talk skin. about that a lot, don't I? Mm. The instant gratification and yeah, like absolutely. delayed gratification is the, is, is the aim. That's what I was talking yeah. about you earlier, one about the, the half decade and decade goals. Mm. That's the same thing for me, whether it's business or whether it's personal life or whether it's whatever. You, you could probably think that like about your kids, right? Yeah, 100%. Because you, 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 he kind of wants his kids to be like into martial arts and boxing and all that. But it's ne- it was never pushed though. It's never pushed. It's kind of guided. You know, so right. like I've said that a million times before. But like uh, for example, um, my kids are into jujitsu, but they found that themselves. Yeah. And uh, I've boxed on my life, so they've came from they've, they've kind of that 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 uh, competitive sports kind of like been pushed not pushed onto them, but they've, they've seen it. And uh, anyway, so they've gone into jujitsu off their own back and all that. And then it's like. All right, cool. If you're gonna do it, mm. you do it for three sessions. You can either quit on them three sessions and say it's not for me, mm. but then it turns into school. You have to go. The days that you don't want to go to school, but now you will go because they'll look back in. They'll look back when they're 16 years old, and I've pulled them out of it because they didn't want to go for a couple of sessions. Then it's like, oh, fucking wish I stuck to it. Yeah. So it's like school, but yeah, it's consistency as well for them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, hundred percent, definitely. It's fucking. I think our kids should learn some sort of martial art or be be. Because there's stuff as a father we can't give to our kids. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's why I think the military is really good. Is I really want to be tough on my kids, in a way, but I don't want to be distant where they think I'm being a certain. Because we're all going to fall out of our kids at some point. Love, love, be, love and boundaries, isn't it? It's going to be at some point my kid fucking going to hate me. Mm. But then when it becomes an adult and actually probably in his thirties, be like fucking hell. My dad actually meant to do that for this reason. Yeah, of course. And that's what you need to leave behind. Don't ever treat your kid in a way that you don't want to be treated, but you need to... I don't know. There's a thin line in there, like, with having kids. It's You want to be their fucking discipline there. They they just allow emotions out of there where you just turn to a little bit. Yeah, that's it, yeah. And it's so hard because you want to discipline them. You're just like, I can't, Mm. like... But that's what I, I've read a good couple of books and uh, Dr. Mate, I don't know if you've heard of him. No. Amazing psychologist to do with kids and stuff like that. Like I've, I've learned how what's, to... What, what's, what's his name, Dave? Dr. Mate. Hey, wait, he'll get, that Johnny will get it. Yeah, yeah, check it on there for us because I want, I, want, I want to tell that home as well. What's he look like? He's so monotone, bro. Is it, it's it, one of his I, know, I know who you mean. He's, yeah. he's the... Chi- uh, he's the child psychologist. Yeah, he's the child psychologist. That, he was on Diary of the CEO, right? He said Dr. Mate, not yeah. Dr. Martin's, Johnny. Mate is... M-A-R-T-A. I I oh, couldn't spell that, mate. If I hadn't seen the word, I can't spell it. <laughs> yeah, if I hadn't seen the word, I can't spell it. So I ain't got a fucking clue. Put diary of the CEO, Doctor Matt, um, Matt, and I bet it'll come up. Is that what it's called? Diary of the, diary of of the, the CEO, CEO Doctor. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Well, Scattered Minds is a really good book. It's all about ADHD and stuff like that, but his way of... Yeah, I know exactly. I've watched this one. This is quite new. I've been listening to it for years, bro. Um, he's taught me how to be a dad and a more emotionally stable dad. Like, your emotions as a dad are so important. Mm. Um, the way you speak to your kids, the trajectory, how you speak to your kids, the yeah. level you speak to your kids. I'm not. When my kids have going through an episode where they don't know the tantrum. So yeah, now yeah. they're two, three years old. Mm. You've got to be in their mindset. That is the it's worst. Emotion. That's the worst thing mm. that kid has ever been through. Yeah. That is the end of the world to that kid. Yeah. And you're there. Stop. No, you get down to the level. Whisper. Come here. You need to be that emotional thing. You're like, yeah. I never had that as a kid. I was always like, pulled, dragged, fucking. Do you know what I mean? But you get down to their level. Sit down. Just sit on the floor. Chill. Chill with them. Make get them on their level, and they'll come over to you. They'll look at you. Look at you. Tears still in his eyes. Look at you. Come on. Hmm. You're giving that guidance and you're giving that protection. Because he's never going to turn to you when he's an adult if yeah, you don't treat does. him like that. Yeah, that's for it. sure. Do you know what I mean? I want to be that fucking person for him and my daughter. But honestly, listen to some of his stuff. Scattered Mind is an amazing book. He's so monotone, bro. He's fucking voice is boring as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I know what, what you mean. mean. I, I find that with Jordan Peterson, though. Do you? Do you? Yeah. 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 I like how emotional he gets, but I do get it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like Canadian accent, isn't it? Yeah. But no, I, he's shit. way worse. This guy that's stopped to He literally Mate. is just... He's insane. Same as Joe Dispenza. Like, he's amazing. Mm. Like, what he does with meditation and guided mm. meditation and yeah. inner self and stuff. Um, but Gabba Mate, it's just mad. He's just set seminars with, like, psychiatrists and counsellors and these are, like, leading people in the world. And he just fucking nails them. They stand mm. up for a question, bam, changes their mindset. Yeah. It's like, fucking hell. Yeah. John, he, I've, I've, he's, yeah, he's just amazing how he comes across. Yeah, when I look into some of his stuff, mate, I've never, I've never heard of the guy to be fair. But this, I'll, I'll, this is why self education is so important. I think we've got an open book of being the person we want to be now with podcasts, Audible. We've got the power to do, to anything. learn anything. And how you want to learn, how you want to be distracted is also. So I've read more books now, and probably I've read about thirty books in the last year, two years. Mm. I didn't read two at school. Do you know what I mean? A self-education, all about mm. mindset, emotions, spirituality, anything to do with neurological pathways, how you girt your microbiome, insulin levels, fibre. I'll just go into it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because your microbiome is so important. Like, yeah. I can talk about nutrition all fucking day, bro. Mm. Like how it's so important with your serotonin levels and shit like that. Insulin levels, how, impo how important that is mm. to regulate. Even like omega-3 fatty oils, how important that is for people with ADHD because your mm. body can't break it down. It has to go straight to your brain with your brain function. Shit like this is just like I try and take it in as much as I can to be the best version. Helpful to yeah. your, your clients. So if people come with me with a problem, like I've been through it, right, I need to fucking re-educate myself and go back over the stuff that I've learned about ADHD, whether it's EUPD, psychosis. I've just learned everything from YouTube, from, I think educational courses like Open University and shit like that, um, like life coaching courses and stuff. But, my life coaching course was the shittest course I've done. Like you trying at the end of it, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Like, mm. it's just there's no resonance, there's no substance. It's just telling me how to teach someone how to be the best version of them from a book. It's yeah, it's no possible. experience. Yeah, it's, it's not possible, bro. Yeah. yeah. So, I want to <clears throat> I want to ask one last question because we've gone half over over That's what we wanted to. So. Um, I'll let you ask the normal question you always ask. The normal but question. Yeah. <laughs> you, you always, we, we, we usually ask the same questions to every guest, don't we? And that, that's kind of like yeah, 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 the yeah, way yeah. we're finished. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my question. And I'm going to make it, try and make it as real as you can. I'm going to think about it. Yeah. Can you say I'm going to think about yeah, it? Yeah, so some, someone's going to watch this who's going through something, mm -hmm. who's going through some shit but they don't want to talk to someone or don't feel like they can talk to someone and they're going through, whether they're going through past trauma or, you know, if they've had, if they've been sexually abused when they're children or they've, they've, they want to commit suicide or something along them lines, they're going through this incredible negative emotion they don't know what to do with it. What would your advice be to that person? That's a big question. An easy answer would be just get through it, but that's not a good enough answer. It's it's too vague, isn't it? It's way too vague. 
and I need to elaborate on the, my answer a little bit. So it's mainly, it's setting up good, healthy discipline and habits. Cut everyone out your life. If you're going through this struggle, you need to get this through yourself. Cut everything out of your life. Don't turn to anyone. Turn inwards. Turn what you need to reflect on and change your habits that you're doing on a daily basis to just positive habits. This may seem fucking simple. Get up, have gratitude. You're fucking breathing, have gratitude. You're eating, have gratitude. These little simple things in your head, what you're doing then is changing the neurological pathway in your brain and the cells. So what you're doing then is reaffirming to yourself you believe it. It may be tedious, you may be doing everything, I don't fucking believe it. But belief is just a fucking doubt. You need to reaffirm it every single day. Say it to yourself. I don't believe it some days, but I have to keep reaffirming it to myself. I'm powerful, I'm amazing, I can do anything in my life because I never got that as a child. The trauma that you're going through right now can change if you change. If you do not change, you'll always stay the, stay, the, stay the same. So just fucking change the person you are and just change. And it's easier said than done, but it's, it's so fucking simple. Just change the person you are. A tree would always be a fucking tree. Yeah, a lion will always be a lion, whether it's in fucking Africa or a fucking zoo. A human can be anything he wants to or she wants to anywhere in the world. And you're stuck in that fucking transition of being that fucking trauma. Change your fucking mindset. Mm. Just be who you want to be and then things will change. I think that's all right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> change, change the patterns. It's, it's mad though, like you said, like, uh... I know it was the last question, so I'm not going to get into it too much, but like you say, a fucking a lion's in a zoo or a lion's in Africa, but a, guy, a fucking uh, a man or a woman can just fucking go anywhere they want and be who they want. I've turned from a trauma child into a trauma fucking teenager, into a fucking soldier, into doing this, to being a lorry driver. To, I could be anything I yeah, want yeah, to be. That's what, yeah, and now yeah. I'm a mindset soldier because I've fucking changed myself. And you can do that. If you want to live in your trauma, keep living your fucking trauma, mate. Chill out, whatever. But there's going to be a point in your life where you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s or 60s, you're going to think, fuck now, why the fuck didn't I make that change? Change. Mm. Yeah. And things will change around you. It will pass as well, won't it? 100%. Every emotion passes. Your, your emotions are just your feelings in motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the surface mentality is ride that wave as long as you fucking can. Mm. That's the happy emotion. The serotonin's the fucking enjoyment of the world, this and that. But realise when it crashes, just fucking paddle. Don't fucking sink. You're choosing to sink. You've yeah. got a fucking paddle for a day. Get on it. Yeah. Are you yeah. seen a lot? Of, are you seen um, the way Jim Carrey is now? Yeah, yeah. So he said something that stuck with me, and he said that depression or your depression, you're depressed because you. He said he uses the word deep rest. Mm -hmm. So you're, he's saying that you're a character that he. He said this is what he went through because of all the characters he played, and the person he became. He said that. You are, you are in depression or you feel depressed because you're being a person that you feel like everyone else wants you to be mm -hmm. and you're, you've got a mask on and you're not being the person that you should be and the person you, you are. So he says, you, it's, it's a small way or a big way. It's your mind and your body telling you that you need to, you, you need deep rest mm -hmm. and your mind needs deep rest from the, the character that you're trying to play. Mm -hmm. And that's what he says and that stuck with me for since I've heard it, yeah, it's I've listened to it a few times, yeah, yeah, and that stuck with me. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that there, and I'm gonna let you finish off. Right, <laughs> mine's more of like hard one to be fair, mate. I just want, cause I, I think you can tell a lot about someone with, with this uh, question as well. So, Go mate, you, 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 you sat, you sat on a fucking, you sat at a dinner table, mate, in any destination you want, fucking top of my Everest with a fucking ice table, some mad shit. You know, tell me what what you want. Any fucking meal, mate, but you're allowed four guests. Three guests, sorry, you're, you're, three, three guests. guests, live or dead, no family members, but there's a lot of fucking, there's a lot of tweak with that. They have to, if you ask them a question, they have to tell you 100% the truth. Fucking hell, this is a big question, bro, Jesus Christ. Mate, three, <laughs> three people. It, it takes people quite a while three to people. usually. Mate, I can just bat them out, I can think of fucking loads. But three, three people. Three people. Like, for example, I, I used Genghis Khan, Michael Jackson, to, so on, do you know what I mean? So it can be anyone, mm. from any point in time. Yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah. Be one of them. I think he's a fucking extraordinary. Like what he's achieved and where he's come from and his uh, views on the world are fucking amazing. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Sure. Mm. Because I always grew up with him. My mum told me he was going to be my dad and I believed that for fucking years. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But just growing up with him, not knowing who he was, he was just a hero to me through these different characters and learning yeah. more about him and what he... He's just fucking mad. Mm. What he's done. Third person... 
Mm. Anyone? Let me think. I like Foxy. Oh, I really? Yeah, I do. I think yeah. it's just amazing what he's been through. Like, him and Middleton and obviously the other guys on there, Ollie, they're the kind of people I aspire to be. Look like. up to, Especially yeah. Especially Foxy. Like, he is just a man's man. Like, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I could be anyone, it would be him. Mm. Yeah. Not Arnold Schwarzenegger. That guy's a hero to me. Yeah, yeah. legit hero. Well. Hero, bro. Yeah. What he's been through, he's open with his emotions, he's still fucking there, he's in great shape. Do you know what I mean? He's there educating people, not just taking away. He always educates in his mindset of talking about how he fucking went to the cliff and all kinds of shit like that and he wanted to commit suicide. For someone to be at that level of special forces to still break just shows what a man needs to be every mm. single day. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Be a fucking good table, that. Yeah. What would you cook? What would I cook? What would I cook? Do you know I love my food, though, but I'm religious for my food. I eat the same food over there, so I'll probably just get poached... Uh, Poached egg and some sauerkraut, bro. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> love a poached egg. Right, fucking last one, man. And lightheartedly, mate, if you could bang anybody out live, up, live or bad, <laughs> who would it be? Bang anyone out. Yeah, so man, would be Judge Rinder, mate, just to make that fucking, just to clarify. Who's it? a Judge, Judge Rinder. Judge, no, Judge Rinder. It's Rinder, isn't it? Yeah, it's Rinder, mate. I don't know the guy. Who could I bang out? <laughs> Richie Sunak, bro. Richie Sunak. Yeah, yeah mate. Yeah, that's a good fucking shout. prick. Really. He's an oxygen thief, mate. Oh, mate. Would you suck a punch him or would you just fucking... <laughs> mate, I'd fucking run up, bro, and fucking... Ne- he wouldn't have no teeth left, bro. Yeah. Yeah, what, like... what he's done to this country and literally just... Yeah, I ain't getting onto that subject, but... Yeah, I was going to say, I wish I was going to even ask, <laughs> yes, mate. Yeah, yeah. Richie Sunak, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm going to finish it there, lads. You happy? Yeah. Mate, yeah. mate Johnny, mate, appreciate you coming on, mate. Uh, yeah, yeah, massively appreciate you coming on. Guys, if you're listening, make sure you check out um, the Mindset Soldier on Instagram, TikTok. And we're gonna, we'll drop the links below anyway. We'll pin it. Yeah. And if you listen to this, guys, and you haven't subscribed already, stop being a dickhead. Don't be a dickhead. And <laughs> love you. Bye. Take care.